so in this video I'll be showcasing a new NFT Salmon Nigiri build and afterwards I'll talk about a couple of giveaways that I'm running in my Discord channel but most of the time I'll be talking about this build. So this is a no NFT Salmon Nigiri build however I am using the Enchanted Fireworks and Enchanted Ornament NFTs but I assure you they do not affect the production rates in any way. So. This build does about 140 Salmon Nigiri per hour. This is before any research box. So doing the researches would likely push it somewhere close to 200 per hour is my guess, but I'm not able to test it out yet. So how this build works is I'm crafting Salmon using the fishing platforms. As you may know, there are two different ways to get salmon. Either the fishing platforms, which are placed next to an open world edge, or you have your wild net fishing, which you need to put next to a waterway. So either an ocean or a river or even a bridge will work. But the thing with the fishing platforms here is that they require two fish chum and eight energy. They are crafted faster at 30 seconds, whereas wild net fishing is one fish chum and four energy, but takes three minutes. Uh, ultimately, my suggestion here, wild net fishing would probably be a better idea because of the reduced craft costs. You would just need more platforms. Uh, as for energy, in this build, I am not running any nuclear power plants and I do not have any passive energy on my fishing platforms. So all the energy provided uh, is provided manually. So I do have several power plants crafting energy and they're able to do this because they have the two passive crude oil from the oil sea. So all that energy they deposit in this warehouse and the fishermen pick up the energy and supply it to the fishing platform. So that's how I am supplying all the energy to these fishing platforms for the salmon. Now before I go further and explain everything else, I'm going to rotate the build so you can see it from every angle. And I'm also going to have the stats on this build at the bottom right corner. So you can see exactly how many buildings I've used and what the build cost is for this entire build. So I already explained how the fishing platforms work here. That's for the salmon. And you would use your salmon and your white rice, the sushi restaurants to actually craft the salmon and giri, which would go in the storehouse. So your white rice comes from these rice fields. Those give you rice husk. And this rice husk, or it's actually called husk rice in the game, that gets picked up by the mixing tents that are crafting the white rice. They'll need two husk rice and also one energy. You gotta make sure they have passive energy, which these do from the power plant. So all these mixing tents, some are crafting white rice, some are crafting fish chum. Fish chum requires seaweed and shrimp, so that's why we have them close to the seafood warehouse and the silo, so they can pick those things up quickly. And also the shrimp farms that craft your shrimps, they also want to be near the uh, both of these, the seafood warehouse and the silo, because they got to pick up seaweed for these and then you got to deposit the shrimp. So that's the most effective way to do that. Now your seaweed gets picked up by your seaweed farmers. Shrimp gets, uh, shrimp gets picked up by your aquaculturists. I'm sure you already know all this if you already watched my previous video on the new fishing update. But um, going more into the uh, quantity of buildings here, these nine mixing tents are crafting white rice. These ten mixing tents are crafting fish chum. Okay. And I believe everything else is self-explanatory. Of course, these are all crafting salmon. These are all crafting salmon and giri. So yes, it seems everything else is self-explanatory. Um, this whole side, aqua cultures, bottom side is fisherman houses, right side is seaweed farmer houses. 
So, um, there are a lot of seaweed farms here. They're all red timer because I'm not using an ocean edge in this build. Now, this build specifically is a desert biome, north layout desert biome. So that means that puts the oil seep right here. If you were to have a river or ocean and the north side, then that would be an east side. Or if you were also blocking the north and east side, then that would be a south side. And that completely changes the positions of the oil seep. So you want to keep that in mind if you're planning on making your build look like this or somewhat like this design because it's going to change it up since the oil seeps in a different location. But I still do recommend that you try to get an ocean or a river if possible. So this build specifically, there is a lot of seaweed and I'm definitely overproducing seaweed. Um, if you were going to try to do this build, I suggest probably getting rid of some of these seaweed farms and putting in more buildings, trying to uh, try to find a way to improve the uh, efficiency of the build, of course. And the main thing that you do want to do if you want to take this build and improve it is consider making some nuclear power plants. Uh, the reason I'm stuck at basically 140 per hour is because of the energy. Um, I can't craft more energy, at least not before doing research, without having possibly more nuclear power plants, for example. And also nuclear power plants would allow you to have passive energy for your fishing platforms or wild net fishing if you're doing that. It's much easier with the wild net fishing because they only need for energy. So even if you didn't get any ocean or river edges, I do recommend you try to find a way to build a nuclear power plant on covering as much of one edge as possible, maybe this edge. And even if you don't get full passive energy for everything, having at least half of it passive energy or partial passive energy is going to help you so much. And then you would just continue to craft energy like I am doing right here. And you'll be able to actually get more salmon that way. Now, of course, you're still going to need to find a way to improve your rice production and your shrimp and fish jump production. But it can definitely be done here. Um, this build is not completely balanced. We are auto selling some stuff here. Uh, for sure, salmon so green and white rice you want to auto sell with keep them on a zero so your storehouse doesn't jam. Seaweed and husk rice, keep them out of at least two. Same with fish chump and shrimp, keep them out of at least two. That way you don't get rid of it right away in case somebody's trying to pick it up. But um, you obviously don't want it to jam your seafood warehouses or your silo. So doing it that way will ensure that you don't jam your storages. And really, that's all I have for this build. I mean, it's about 140 per hour for no NFTs. That seems fine to me. I know people are pushing way higher numbers, but they're obviously utilizing a waterway to do wild net fishing and they're using nukes. That's more time consuming, but you can always improve this build to implement those features. Uh, the only thing I haven't mentioned here, which is probably obvious, this refinery is crafting gasoline, taking it here, and this refinery right here is the one crafting petroleum, just in case you couldn't figure that out, but that's all there. Link for the town guide file, so you can load it in there and edit it, is in the description of the video. You can also find it on the Town Star playbook. And one last thing I want to mention, they did update the build costs of these buildings. So they're actually much easier now. Instead of lumber on most of these buildings, they only require oak wood. And uh, instead of 10 of each, it only requires five of each. So that applies to the aquaculturist, fisherman house, seaweed farmer house, and the mixing tent. I believe they also reduced the fishing platform's water requirement from 30 down to 25. Not that much of a reduction, but I guess that's something. Uh, everything else, I believe, remained the same. And this is just for the build cost, the crafting requirement of everything is still the same. So I thought I would mention that in case you haven't figured it out, which you probably have by now. Okay, so I am running three giveaways in the Devs Community Discord server, sponsored by two different people. So the following three NFTs will be given away. 
an Epic Garment Specialist Ghost Card, a Rare Gusty Winds Ghost Card, and an Uncommon Gusty Winds Ghost Card. The Epic Garment Specialist Ghost Card was sent over by Nibblebit to be given away to the community, so thank you so much Nibblebit. Uh, when applied, the Garment Specialist Ghost Card will reduce the craft time of all the crafts in the fabric plant. And both Gusty Windmill Ghost Cards were sent over by Margin Seabulls to be given away to the community, so thank you so much Margin Seabulls. Uh, when applied, the Gusty Winds Ghost Cards will reduce the craft time of all the crafts in the wind mill. The higher the rarity of the ghost cards, the better the time reduction it gives. So to enter these giveaways, just visit my Discord server, which is called Dubs Community Discord Server, and go to the giveaways channel and click the react button below each giveaway post to enter it. Uh, the winners will be announced sometime after the competition ends. You can join in all three if you wish, although if you already have these ghost cards, consider letting someone uh, without these ghost cards try to win them instead. I'm sure it would mean a lot to someone who wasn't able to get these NFTs in the competitions from a couple months ago to be able to win one from this giveaway. So thank you so much both of you Nibbles a bit and Martin Siebels for sponsoring this giveaway. Appreciate it so much. So really that's all I have to talk about. This build is pretty decent and obviously it can be improved. I definitely think it can get you into top 1000 with the current player base. Like I don't really feel like that many players are actually trying that hard in the gala reward competitions. So if you think you could do this, uh, definitely give it a shot. Oh, and in case some of you are asking if there is a cash boost for this meta, no, there's not unless you consider Salmon and Giri. Simon and Giri is cash boosted and boosted in stars, that is the meta, but there isn't anything else that's cash boosted. So, some of you are asking, what do I do for cash rush? Um, if you have no NFTs, I would just say do wool and then transition to wool yarn and eventually transition to uniforms. It's a lot of work, but you are going to need a lot of money to save up for the buildings to produce ice blocks and then, of course, some of these buildings to actually get started with the Salmon Nigiri. I would say try to get started with Salmon Nigiri as soon as you can. Like just have some a few of each buildings and slowly craft it. And once you at least start selling batches of Salmon Nigiri, you're going to get a bunch of cash and it's just going to scale up really quickly from there. So that's what I would recommend on that part. Really, that's all I have to talk about. Uh, hopefully you found this video informative. Consider leaving a like and leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback or how you feel about this competition. <laughs> so consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed already. I appreciate your support. Thank you for watching.